So this one is easy, rotation 13. That basically means the letters have been rotated 13 places, like left or right. So let's just search for rot 13. And there we go. So that was easy. This one I still don't know. Let's see this one. Can you find the flag in the file? Yes, I can. Save link as file two. And let's see, we'll just move this here. And we have file two there. So Let's see. You can also find the file. Okay. Well, that's easy, I think. Let's see, file two. Uh, is it. Okay, it's just ASCII text. Let's see, grip. Let's try the, uh, the most simple form we can do to begin with. And that worked. So there are more advanced things that you can do with grip. We could have used a regular expression, but I figured let's just try the most simple stuff now. And if it works, it works. And... Uh, see... Netcat. Yes, I can. Port four nine three eight seven. Copy. And see. Just reading the text and trying to understand what they mean. Okay, I think uh, we have to do some password cracking. Let's just have a look. Admin, admin. Nope, didn't work. <laughs> okay, let's see. The shadow file is usually where the password will be. So let's have a look. Root. And it's encrypted. Well, not encrypted. It's hashed. So uh, we use John, I think it's called. I almost never have to crack files, but... Oh, it's the wrong file. So let's just turn run it by default. Let's just... Uh, we can try with other stuff, like custom word lists in a moment. But... Let's just see if we, cra if we cracked it. So we did. The answer is kiss me. So yeah, yeah, we have to uh, root kiss me, and there we go. So a thing we might want to look, you might want to know about, is this shadow format. So uh, shadow password format. There should be a Wikipedia page, or maybe this website is also good. So uh, I'm looking for the... Yeah, there. So basically uh, this means that it's SHA-256 and this means that it's SHA-52. So in our case it was uh, this one. So that means that it is SHA-52 hashed. And the next part, like this part, should be the salts. And then this part should be the hashed part. So, yeah, it's good to know. 
in case you don't know. So uh, yeah, useful knowledge if you are new to Linux. Then you can easily tell if a shadow file contains very old hashes. For example, I think I'm trying to find if this page has an answer to that. And it does. So for example, one is for MD5, which is very fast. Uh, you can crack that quite fast. Like you still need to use a word list, like a huge word list, or you can try and brute for smaller passwords. But it's much faster to try and attempt to crack an MD5 hash than it is to crack, for example, SHA-512. So that's useful to know. And you can also do multiple rounds. So that also slows down brute force attacks. Anyway, let's move on. And let's just close these windows. And strings, yes I can. I already know what we have to do almost without reading it. So I guess this is a binary file. And we want to look for a Pico CTF, uh, CTF flag inside the file. So if we take a look at the file type, we can see that it is an executable. So what we do is that we run strings like this is a program. So maybe just rename that uh, file strings to a uh, program. And then we will run strings against the program file that we downloaded. And then we will run less. So this basically takes out all the strings or prints out all the strings from the, uh, from the binary. And you can see that if we ran the program, it, will, it would have most likely printed out this text here. So we could just, you know, uh, use enter or the space key or page up and page down. Or we can use grep. But in this case, if you press the uh, forward slash button like I did here, and then we just search for Pico and press enter, you can also search. So another useful feature in case you're not familiar with less. So there we go. And it's annoying that I can't just keep that closed. <laughs> so let's see. During your adventure, you will likely encounter a situation where you will need to process data that you receive over the network rather than a file. Can you find a way to save the output from this program and search for the flag? Connect with this thing here. I have no idea what they mean, but I kind of have an idea. Okay, okay. <laughs> so what this does is that it just uh, returns a lot of garbage data, as you can see here. And obviously, uh, you're, you're not going to look through this manually. So instead, we just, uh, because it's coming out, all this data to us, we just grab for Pico. And then we have the data that we want. So another easy challenge, inspect this code. Can I click the link? My first website. Oh yeah, it's gonna it's going to be here, yeah. Inspect. Uh, it's only one third of the flag. That's a good one. So it's not super easy. Well, it's still easy, but not way too easy. So that's part one through third of the flag. And let's see. Looks like we might actually have to do something more than just uh, Well, that's good. We might have to use burp, actually. So I guess that since there are two extra files loaded with this website, we will have to find the flag in these two files. Now we could also use, by pressing F12, we could also use the, de the deliver, <laughs> we could also use the developer console. So we click F12, then click network, and then hit F5. 
And I'm not sure if we can search in this one. I know that we can search in the inspector maybe. So here we can, for example, search for Pico, but it doesn't search in all the other files. So uh, it's not super useful for finding stuff in the other files. But we could look here in these two files as well. So we could take a look at the response, for example. You can see there is something down here and also down here. So uh, yeah, we could do that. Or if we have burp running and we have uh, some data intercepted, we could use the search function, but I'm not sure if the search function is available in the free version, but it's useful to know. Anyway, let's just go on with the flag. Inspector gadget. Oh, that's annoying. It's like going up and down, so I can't really click it. Okay, let's just open in a new tab and then just copy it from here. And it was over here. That should be it. Yes. This one is a little bit harder. Can you find the flag in remember grip is your yes, I can. So let's see. Grippity grip. CD and I have caps lock based from browser. Ah, this one. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pico. Boom. So what it is, it was here that instead of grabbing for each file, maybe this is a directory. Let's just have a look. So yeah, this is a directory. So if we browse through all of the directories, like so, I think, or maybe it's like this, yeah. You can see that there are a lot of files and a lot of directories. So instead of going through each directory, like so, um, we use recursive grep. And recursive grep is basically going through all directories and all files below the current directory. So any files, below this directory will be gripped through, even binary files as well. But the output from binary files will generally not be displayed in case you hit a binary file, but it will say that that was a match. So you can use strings afterwards. So there we have our answer. And we are ready to move on. And I didn't copy it. Copy. And, well, let's try again. See, it's never a bad idea to brush up on those Linux skills or even learn some new ones before you set yourself off on this adventure. Before I end this video, I would like to thank all of my Patreons at patreon.com and in particular, my lead supporter Josh. As you may have seen in the video title, we have our first giveaway this month, thanks to the Patreons. The giveaway is one month subscription to the Pencester Lab Pro, which is a website where you can learn and practice hacking skills. In other words, an online hacking lab. To enter this giveaway, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and leave a comment down below. If you're a Patreon, you will automatically enter into a separate Patreon-only draw. For future giveaways, it will generally not be possible to win two times in a row, and this is because I want as many different people as possible to win these giveaways. Stay tuned and subscribe!